what's going on everybody? Thank you so much for coming back to another video. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about I am number four. As you can tell from the thumbnail and the title, I have Rashad G reviews here in this video with me. We're gonna hear from him in just one moment, but yeah, this is the film that I chose for him to watch in our back and forth series. The last one that I had him check out was The Haunted Mansion with Eddie Murphy, and then he had me check out Boomerang with Eddie Murphy. So if you guys are interested in hearing our thoughts on that, that's over on his channel. But yeah, so I wanted him to check out a movie called I am number four. Recently, I've been giving him a lot of Disney films or some goofy films that I grew up enjoying but knew that they would be cheesy and not necessarily something he'd be in love with but this time I thought I'd give him something that you know I thought was pretty cool a film that I grew up enjoying that I saw when I was a teenager and I thought that'd be something that he liked so definitely gonna hear what he has to say in just one moment but yeah I am number four I had no idea what this movie was or that it was a book series when this movie first came out I actually just decided to go to the movies one day with my dad and one of my best friends Thomas and my dad was like hey do you guys want to see this movie called I am number four he said he had seen some previews on it I think I had seen a poster or two of it but I honestly had not really heard much about this movie and clearly it's kind of continued that way because I feel like nobody really knows about this movie. This film centers around a character who continually changes his name, but for this uh, review, we're going to just call him Number Four because that's essentially who he is. And yeah, he's one of nine, and they're essentially aliens from a different planet who have escaped another alien species that's trying to destroy them. Each of the nine have different abilities and different things that they can do, and they're meant to come together and combine their powers to destroy the evil aliens that are after them. And that's essentially the basic idea is you have this guy who's running from these monsters. He has to continually change his name. He has to go into hiding. He has to change where he lives and him and his guardian who's also an alien from his planet uh, are, are essentially just in hiding so each of these numbers you know one two three all the way up to nine they all have a guardian from this planet who's with them and this film focuses on number four and his guardian and yeah I really do enjoy the the camaraderie there he essentially has to act like he's his dad and they kind of have to keep bouncing from city to city anytime something happens because they cannot even risk the opportunity of him being online being seen anywhere so that the Mogadorians cannot get at him the Mogadorians I feel it's such a goofy name but as a big sci-fi fan I kind of think it's funny but yeah that's essentially the basic premise and on an overall level I really enjoyed this movie I went back and rewatched it before this video and yeah you know it's a little cheesy it's a little goofy and I think it definitely leaves you wanting more but on an overall level I think it's a fun action sci-fi film it came out in the era of uh, you know a lot of adult novels being put into films you know you had uh, I think this was like near the tail end of Twilight and you know somewhere in the middle of the Hunger Games craze going on yeah you know this is a Around that area it was another adult novel so it does have that level of cheese to it but on an overall level I find it to be a pretty cool movie with a really cool concept my friend Thomas who I saw the movie with ended up really taking a liking to the movie and decided to go and check out the book series and from what I heard from him they do get better with each book and there's definitely some books that have some really cool things and the franchise started to get a lot bigger but they never made more movies so this film does leave you essentially like on a cliffhanger you know there is conclusion to the story in this movie but it leaves you with you know what essentially the books would do setting up for more adventure setting up for the full conclusion of the story of this character to be told out through the through the next installment so they ended up never making the next movies which is definitely a big bummer now before I continue my thoughts on this movie let's go ahead and hear what Rashad G reviews have to say about this <laughs> Alright, alright, alright. If you got to this portion of the video, that means A. Perez has already given the synopsis and the whole backstory of this movie, so I'm just gonna get into the, the whopper and fries of this goddamn thing. Drum roll, Rashad, did you like this movie? Yes. <laughs> I am number four. Perez, I ain't gonna front, homie. When you uh, put me onto this, I said, uh oh, I said, I hope this is not some more bullshit. That you've been trying to put me on because the last few picks, bruh, it's been a little suspect. I gotta say, I love this movie. Well, you know what? Uh, I'm, okay, I'm jumping the gun. I'm not gonna say I love it yet. I'm gonna say I really like it. I really dug it. This was a refreshing take on the superhero slash sci-fi genre because lately I've been seeing nothing but, you know, Marvel and DC shit. That there's not really... Many more sci-fi or superhero movies that I can think of that don't have to do with MCU or DCU. So it was just it was just cool to see something different. But at the same time, even though it's something different, it's not. So I'm gonna get right into the negatives. The negatives about this movie is the cliches. You have the classic story of the new kid that comes in to a new school and he has eyes for this girl, the photographer chick, I think her name was Sarah. But Sarah is the ex-girlfriend of the school bully slash star quarterback who now has it out for, uh, what's his name, John. And John 
befriends the nerd kid who he has to protect because the bully wants to be up the nerd kid. It's everything we've seen in every teen movie you can think of, Breakfast Club, you name it, we've seen this shit before. Even with the superhero stuff, you know, him discovering his powers and see what he can do. He has the, the flashlights coming out of his hand. He's super strong, super fast. Oh my God, what's happening to me? We've seen this all before. But, you know, even when something has been done a lot, if you do it right, it's still good. So whoever directed this did a good job with the execution of how this movie played out because before you get to the really heavy action stuff, you you get to know these characters. So uh, personally speaking, you know, I like a good action movie, but at the same time, I like movies where it focuses on the characters. So then by the third act, you care about what happens to these characters. And that's what this movie was. The bad guys that was chasing them. So, uh, okay, we know the whole thing is he's from another planet. He's part of these, I guess, nine people, nine super beings that's supposed to save the world or some shit like that. I gotta watch it again. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, these, these alien creatures, these bad guys who look like they're, they're like a mix between the creatures from Alien Nation made love to a fucking piranha. Cause they was really creepy looking. They had the gills and shit and yeah, it was just real, real nasty looking, but, but effective. They were really, there were some really menacing bad guys and that fucking, that bat creature that they kept in the truck. I thought he would, that thing was creepy as shit. And, uh, the dog, oh my God, the dog, I have a weakness for animals in movies. So whenever I see a dog in a movie, the first thing I think of is nothing better happen to the dog. I kept thinking that the whole time. If anything happens to the dog, I'm going to be pissed. The only surprise in this movie, besides it being a really good movie, was the dog. When the dog did what it did, I said, mm, I was not ready. <laughs> I was not ready for what the hell the dog did. He ended up being a protector for John. And, uh, well, spoilers, I'm assuming here. I went When I thought the dog died, I was a hair away from turning it off. I promise y'all. I was about to turn this shit off. I said, oh, I don't want to see no more. But I kept watching, and the dog lived... Yay. This movie was tight, y'all. This easily goes in my collection, and it's sad that I Am Number 4 is better than Captain Marvel and the last two X-Men movies combined. Why there's not a sequel to this, I do not know. I enjoyed this movie so much, Perez, that I was looking for the sequel, something, a continuation about this movie, because I want to see what happens after uh, number 4 and number 6 hooked up to go find the rest of them. I'm like, I want to see that. I want to see the further adventures. What happened? And number six, by the way, she kicked ass. That bitch was bad. I mean, I didn't mean to call her a bitch, but <laughs> I don't know who's all to be watching this video, but that chick was bad, yo. She was like, she was real kick ass without the whole SJW forcing down our throats, uh, feminist propaganda shit. She was just a badass chick. Her and number four worked well together. And for a moment, I thought they were going to hook up. But maybe they're on some brother and sister type shit. I don't know. But for a moment, it looked like they gave each other the fuck me eyes. Uh, mm -hmm. Who knows? But anyways, uh, wrapping this up. I am number four. Gets a B. I'm going to give it a B plus, man. I really enjoyed this. I was surprised. Uh, Perez, you came through with this one. Because, homie, you were starting to worry me. So, yeah, y'all. Uh, without listening to me ramble on, I'm going to give the floor back to Perez. What you got, homie? Big thanks to Rashad for being in this video with me. I always love hearing what you have to say, man. And I can't wait to continue doing this back and forth series with you. Yeah, on an overall level, guys, I find this movie to be fun. I think it's a really cool sci-fi film that has a lot of heart. There are some emotional beats in the film. And there's some stuff that you can definitely latch on to. I really enjoy the main character and his love interest. I enjoy their chemistry and their relationship throughout the film. And I feel for his character a lot of the times. You know, he wants to be a normal kid. He wants to be able to love somebody and kind of just stay in one place and enjoy life. But he constantly has to be on the run and constantly has to be afraid of these aliens coming to get him. I think the thing that I dislike about this film the most is that there is another number, another one of these aliens who is part of this story. And she's trickled out throughout the film, but she doesn't show up until the very end to really team up with him, which obviously sets you up for the next movie. But I just always felt like she was just underutilized in this film, especially now looking back that they have not made the rest of these films. I think that they could definitely still make the rest of these films and I would love to see where it'll play out. I think the special effects in this film are a little cheesy, a little dated at times. It's not the top-notch CG, but it's definitely cool. If you're a fan of big sci-fi action movies, there's definitely a lot really cool in here. There's some great practical effects and practical makeup on the villains of this movie. They have a really cool design on their face. They have like, these gills right here on their face. And as a big fan of aliens and sci-fi and all that kind of jazz, it's definitely right up my alley. And yeah, again, this movie can be a little cheesy at times, but it's well shot. It has really solid action. It has a sense of stakes. You know what's at stake when you're watching the 
movie. It's paced very well and it has a set of characters that you can find yourself caring about by the end of the film. I think the biggest bummer about this movie going back and watching it is the fact that it leaves you wanting more. The fact that it doesn't go anywhere, you know, that, that it just ends with a cliffhanger with a, you know, a hopeful ending for what can become something really cool and then just kind of left it there. But on an overall level, I feel like this film is well acted, though it has, you know, again, that adult novel movie kind of cheese to it, but I have a great time with it. Some really badass action, some great set pieces, and some really memorable moments. There's some great soundtrack in this film as well, and I think there's a lot of really cool references to things, and on an overall level, I find this to be a fun watch. I went back and watched it on my Voodoo, and I had a lot of fun with it. I wasn't bored at all throughout the watch time. There are some slow moments, and again, some things that are a little bit underdeveloped, including the other alien that's, you know, a number like he is, and yeah, I wish that they would have just dived deeper into certain things, but on an overall level, I had a great time with this, and I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say, so definitely leave your comments down below. Do you like this movie? Do you not like this movie? Go to the description box down below. You guys can go and check out Rashad G Reviews channel. Definitely a great channel that I highly recommend. Yeah, and I'll see each and every single one of you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.